Jake Reyes's body slammed against the observation glass, blood pouring down his face as the alien doctor's scalpel tore into his flesh during a medical examination that was clearly an excuse for vivisection. But the brutal torture didn't kill Jake. His impossible human resilience to disease and injury would soon shock the Vorkarian scientists and upend decades of research. Jake had arrived on the Vorkarian homeworld mere hours earlier for a scientific conference on interspecies disease transmission. The bipedal feline aliens, their iridescent fur rippling, had only recently opened their borders after centuries of isolation due to devastating pandemics on their worlds. At the conference, brilliant Vorkarian virologist Vortis presented chilling findings on the Crimson Scourge, a horrific new hemorrhagic virus liquefying organs with a 90% death rate as it spread across Vorkarian colonies. Entire star systems were quarantined in panic, then the alarms blared. The Crimson Scourge was loose at the conference. The building locked down as aliens stampeded to quarantine zones in terror. Jake followed the frenzied crowd, seeing Vortis glaring at him in suspicion and fear. The human knew in that moment the aliens would do anything, even kill, to understand how he alone might survive the Scourge. Jake would have to fight for answers, as much as for his life as the Vorkarians sought to unravel the mystery of human immunity before the scourge consumed them all. Dozens of Vorkarian doctors in white biocontainment suits bustled around the quarantine zone, poking and prodding the frightened conference attendees. The air reeked of fear and antiseptic. Yowls and hisses echoed off the metal walls as the feline aliens submitted to invasive medical tests. Jake stood in line, the lone human, acutely aware of the glances thrown his way. Hushed whispers followed him as he moved from one examination station to the next. Vorkarian medics took countless samples, blood, saliva, fur, and skin scrapings. Jake winced as yet another needle pierced his arm, the sting barely registering amidst his growing unease. As he waited for the results, Jake couldn't help but overhear a cluster of doctors huddled nearby, their voices rising in agitation. Over 80% are already infected, one said, shaking his head, and the symptoms are progressing rapidly. We're losing control, another whispered, if we can't contain it here. The conversation cut off abruptly as Vortis strode into the room, two burly security officers at his heels. The virologist made a beeline for Jake, his iridescent fur bristling. You, human, Vortis snapped, his yellow eyes narrowed. Come with me now. Jake balked. What's going on? Why am I being singled out? Vortis's tail lashed impatiently. Your test results are anomalous. We need to conduct further investigations in a secure lab. Anomalous how, Jake pressed. Vortis hesitated, glancing at the security officers before leaning in close. You're the only one here who hasn't tested positive for the Crimson Scourge. Jake's mind reeled. That's impossible. I was exposed just like everyone else. Exactly, Vortis hissed. The virus has never failed to infect a known species, which means you're either immune, a carrier, or... He trailed off, letting the implication hang in the air. Jake's heart raced as he connected the dots. They thought he was responsible for the outbreak. The security officers stepped forward, ready to escort him to the lab. Jake knew he wouldn't be leaving that room once he entered. Suddenly screams erupted from the far side of the quarantine zone. Jake whipped around to see several Vorkarians convulsing on the floor, blood gushing from their eyes and mouths. Panic swept through the room as doctors rushed to assist, barking orders for sedatives and restraints. In the chaos, Jake saw his chance. He bolted, ducking under the arms of the startled security officers and weaving through the crowd of terrified aliens. Vortis's enraged shouts chased him as he sprinted for the exit. Jake didn't know where he was going, only that he had to get away and find the truth. He couldn't let the Vorkarians use him as a scapegoat for this nightmare. As he raced down the unfamiliar corridors, Jake's mind spun with questions. Why was he the only one unaffected? What made humans different? And most importantly, how was he going to prove his innocence before the Crimson Scourge consumed them all? Jake burst out of the conference facility, 
his heart pounding as he raced down the crowded streets of the Vorkarian capital. The city's towering spires and iridescent buildings blurred past him as he ran, desperate to put distance between himself and the pursuing authorities. He fumbled for his communicator, trying to contact the human embassy, but the device only beeped in frustration. All channels were blocked. As he navigated the unfamiliar cityscape, Jake noticed a change in the atmosphere. The once bustling streets were emptying rapidly, with Vorkarian citizens hurrying into their homes, their fur bristling with fear. News screens flickered to life on every corner, the images painting a grim picture. The crimson scourge was spreading like wildfire, the death toll already climbing into the thousands. Panic gripped the city. Jake knew he had to get off-world and fast. The Vorkarian authorities would stop at nothing to track him down, to use him as a scapegoat for the outbreak. He scanned the streets, looking for any sign of hope, and spotted a seedy bar nestled in the city's underbelly. The kind of place where questions weren't asked and secrets could be bought. Inside, the bar was a din of noise and smoke, filled with a motley assortment of aliens from across the galaxy. Jake approached the counter, keeping his head down, and asked the bartender if he knew any pilots who could get him off-world. The bartender, a grizzled Vorkarian with a scar across his snout, jerked his head towards a corner booth. There, nursing a glowing green drink, sat Rax. The Vorkarian spacer had a weathered look about him, his fur speckled with grey and his eyes hard as flint. Jake slid into the booth, making his pitch. Rax listened, his tail flicking thoughtfully, before naming his price. A substantial sum of credits, but Jake didn't hesitate. He'd pay anything to escape this nightmare. Just as they rose to leave, the bar's doors burst open. Vortis stormed in, flanked by a team of heavily armed Vorkarian soldiers. The virologist's eyes locked onto Jake, his fur bristling with rage. Seize him! Vortis snarled. Chaos erupted. Patrons screamed and dove for cover as the soldiers opened fire, blaster bolts sizzling through the air. Rax shoved Jake down, yanking out his own blaster and returning fire. Go! The spacer yelled over the din. I'll hold them off. Jake scrambled, bolting for the back exit as blaster fire scorched the walls around him. He burst out into the alleyway, only to cry out in pain as a stray blast caught him in the shoulder. Blood poured down his arm, but he gritted his teeth and ran, adrenaline pumping through his veins. The alleyways were a maze, twisting and turning as Jake fought to stay conscious. His vision blurred, the world spinning around him, but he pushed on. Finally, he stumbled into an abandoned warehouse, the door hanging off its hinges. Inside, huddled in the shadows, was a group of terrified Vorkarian civilians. Their eyes widened at the sight of him, some hissing in fear. But one stepped forward, a young female with sleek black fur. Zara. Jake recognized her from the conference, a rising star in the field of virology. She took in his injury, her eyes widening in recognition and fear. But something else flickered in her gaze. Determination. You're the human, she said softly, the one they're hunting. Jake nodded, wincing as pain lanced through his shoulder. Zara hesitated for a moment, then stepped forward, pulling a med kit from her bag. Let me help, she said, her voice trembling slightly. I'm a doctor. As she tended to his wound, Zara spoke in hushed tones, revealing a secret that could change everything. She had been studying the Crimson Scourge virus in secret, and what she'd found terrified her. The Vorkarian government was hiding the true extent of the outbreak, and Zara believed the virus had originated from a classified bioweapons program. But you, she whispered, her eyes meeting Jake's, you're immune. I saw your test results. Your immunity could hold the key to developing a cure. Jake's mind reeled, a bioweapon, a cure, the world tilted around him and he slumped back against the wall, his breath coming in ragged gasps. Outside, the sound of sirens grew louder, the search closing in. Jake knew they couldn't stay here long. But with Zara's revelation, everything had changed. Jake wasn't just running for his life anymore. He was running for the truth, and the fate of an entire species hung in the balance. The tension in the abandoned warehouse was palpable, 
as Jake and Zara huddled together, discussing their options in hushed tones. The sound of approaching footsteps echoed through the cavernous space, and they both froze, their hearts pounding in their chests. Vortis emerged from the shadows, flanked by a squad of heavily armed Vorkarian soldiers. The virologist's fur bristled with barely contained rage as he fixed his gaze on Jake. You can't run forever, human, he snarled, his voice dripping with contempt. Jake stood his ground, shielding Zara and the other civilians behind him. I won't let you use me as a pawn in your twisted schemes, Vortis. Vortis's eyes narrowed. You have no idea what's at stake here. The Crimson Scourge is more than just a virus, it's the key to Vorkarian supremacy, and you, with your inexplicable immunity, hold the secrets we need to unleash its full potential. Zara gasped, her eyes widening in horror. You're insane, you can't possibly be suggesting... A bioweapon, Jake finished, his voice grim. You're planning to weaponize the virus. Vortis's lips curled into a cruel smile. Imagine it. A virus that can target specific species, leaving Vorkarians untouched while our enemies fall. With your immunity, we could create an unstoppable weapon. No one would dare stand against us. Jake shook his head in disgust. I won't be a part of this madness. I'll never help you. Vortis's fur bristled with anger. You don't have a choice. Surrender now or watch as your friends pay the price for your defiance. The soldiers raised their weapons, the laser sights painting red dots across Jake's chest. The standoff seemed poised on the brink of violence, the tension stretching to its breaking point. Suddenly a massive explosion rocked the warehouse, sending everyone stumbling. Smoke and debris filled the air as a gaping hole was blown in the far wall. Through the haze, a familiar figure emerged, Rax, the grizzled Vorkarian spacer from the bar. Sorry to crash the party. Rax growled, a fierce grin on his face. But I couldn't let you have all the fun, Jake. Behind Rax, a group of heavily armed mercenaries poured into the warehouse, their weapons trained on Vortis and his soldiers. Chaos erupted as blaster fire filled the air, the two sides clashing in a brutal firefight. Jake seized the opportunity, grabbing Zara's hand and yelling for the civilians to follow him. They raced through the warehouse, dodging stray blaster bolts and leaping over debris. Rax and his mercenaries provided cover fire, holding off Vortis's forces as Jake and the others made their escape. They burst out into the night, sprinting through the alleyways until they reached a small spaceport on the outskirts of the city. Rax had a transport ship waiting, its engines already humming with power. Get in! Rax shouted over the roar of the engines. We need to get off this rock before Vortis sends the whole damn army after us. Jake, Zara, and the civilians piled into the ship, strapping themselves in as Rax gunned the engines. The transport ship lifted off, blasting through the atmosphere and into the star-studded expanse of space. As they hurtled through the void, Zara turned to Jake, her eyes shining with excitement. Jake, I think I've figured something out about your immunity. Jake leaned forward, his heart racing. What is it? Zara took a deep breath. It's not your human physiology that makes you immune. It's a rare genetic mutation, something in your DNA. I think... I think it could be the key to developing a cure for the Crimson Scourge. Jake's mind reeled with the implications. A cure, are you sure? Zara nodded. I'd need access to better equipment and facilities to synthesize it, but yes, I believe it's possible. Jake's thoughts raced as he considered their next move. He activated his communicator and contacted the human embassy, hoping against hope that they would answer. To his relief, a human voice crackled over the comm. This is Ambassador Novak of the Terran Embassy. We've been trying to reach you, Mr. Reyes. What's your situation? Jake quickly explained everything that had happened, from the outbreak at the conference to Vortis's bioweapon plot. Ambassador, we need help. We have information that could lead to a cure but we need access to advanced medical facilities and protection from Vortis. There was a moment of silence on the other end. Then Ambassador Novak spoke, his voice filled with determination. A task force of our best scientists and military personnel is already en route to the Vorkarian homeworld. 
We'll arrange a rendezvous at a neutral space station. Send us your coordinates and we'll make sure you get the help you need. Jake felt a surge of hope as he transmitted their location. Maybe, just maybe, they could find a way to stop the Crimson Scourge and expose Vortis's twisted plans. But that hope was short-lived. As they approached the coordinates of the neutral space station, the ship's sensors blared in warning. We've got company, Rax shouted from the cockpit. A Vorkarian warship, closing fast. Jake's heart sank as he realized the truth. Vortis wasn't going to let them go that easily. The virologist was determined to capture Jake at any cost, even if it meant starting an interstellar incident. The warship loomed on the viewscreen, its weapons already charging. Rax gripped the controls, his jaw set with grim determination. Hang on tight, he growled. This is going to get rough. The transport ship shuddered as the first volley of laser fire slammed into its shields. Jake braced himself, watching as the neutral space station grew larger on the viewscreen. The human task force was there, waiting for them, but they still had to survive long enough to reach it. The ship bucked and weaved as Rax threw it into evasive maneuvers, desperately trying to avoid the warship's relentless onslaught. The shields were already failing, the hull groaning under the strain of the assault. Jake closed his eyes, praying to whatever gods might be listening. They were so close to safety, so close to a chance at ending this nightmare. They just had to hold on a little longer. Suddenly the ship lurched violently, throwing Jake from his seat. Alarms blared as the lights flickered and died, plunging the interior into darkness. The acrid smell of smoke filled the air, and Jake could hear Zara and the others crying out in fear. Rax's voice cut through the chaos, strained and urgent. We're hit. Shields are down, engines failing. I'm losing control. The ship spun wildly, the stars outside the viewports blurring into streaks of light. Jake's vision tunneled as the G-forces pressed him back against the wall, his consciousness fading. The last thing he saw before the darkness claimed him was the looming shape of the space station, tantalizingly close yet impossibly far away. As the world faded to black, one final thought echoed through Jake's mind. They had to make it. They had to survive. The fate of an entire species hung in the balance and he would not let them down. The transport ship shuddered and shook as Rax frantically worked the controls, trying to evade the relentless pursuit of Vortis's warship. The Vorkarian spacer's fur was slick with sweat, his eyes darting across the instrument panels. They're gaining on us, Rax growled through gritted teeth. We need to lose them fast. Jake braced himself against a bulkhead, his mind racing. They couldn't outrun the warship forever, and their shields were already failing. Suddenly an idea struck him. Rax, what about that wormhole we passed earlier? The one you said was too unstable to use. The Vorkarian's eyes widened. Are you insane? We have no idea where that thing could spit us out if we even survive the jump. Zara spoke up from where she was tending to the wounded Vorkarian civilians. It's our only chance. We'll never make it to the rendezvous point with that warship on our tail. Rax hesitated for a moment, then nodded grimly. All right, hold on to your tails. This is going to be a rough ride. He punched in the coordinates for the wormhole and gunned the engines. The transport ship lurched forward, the stars outside the viewports blurring into streaks of light as they hurtled towards the swirling vortex of the wormhole. Jake felt his stomach drop as they plunged into the wormhole, the ship shaking so violently he thought it would tear itself apart. Colors and shapes he had no words for flashed past the viewports, and he could feel reality itself warping and twisting around them. And then, just as suddenly as it had begun, it was over. The ship emerged from the other side of the wormhole, the stars snapping back into focus. But something was wrong. Alarms blared throughout the ship and Rax cursed under his breath. The wormhole's collapsing, he shouted over the din. It's dragging us back in. Jake felt a sickening lurch as the ship was caught in the wormhole's gravitational pull, spinning out of control. He was thrown from his seat, slamming into the bulkhead with bone-jarring force. The last thing he saw before blacking out was the planet rushing up to meet them. Its surface, a bleak expanse of rocky desert. When Jake came to, 
he found himself lying on the floor of the transport ship, his head throbbing. He struggled to his feet, taking in the scene of destruction around him. The ship had crash-landed on the planet's surface, its hull torn open and exposed to the harsh, alien environment outside. Rax was slumped over the controls, a trickle of blood running down his temple. Zara and the Vorkarian civilians were scattered throughout the ship, some unconscious, others groaning in pain. Jake staggered over to Zara, helping her to her feet. Is everyone all right? he asked, his voice rough. Zara nodded, wincing as she touched a gash on her forehead. We're alive, but the ship, it's badly damaged. We won't be flying out of here any time soon. Jake looked out through the gaping hole in the hull, taking in the desolate landscape outside. The sky was a sickly green, and the air shimmered with heat. In the distance, he could see the ruins of what looked like an ancient city, its towering spires crumbling and overgrown with strange, twisted vegetation. We need to find shelter, he said, turning back to Zara. And supplies, we don't know how long we'll be stuck here. They gathered what they could from the wreckage of the ship, food, water, medical supplies, and set out across the barren landscape towards the ruined city. The sun beat down on them mercilessly, and the air was thick with the stench of decay. As they picked their way through the rubble-strewn streets, Jake couldn't shake the feeling that they were being watched. The city was deathly silent, but he could feel eyes on him, hidden in the shadows of the crumbling buildings. Suddenly, Zara let out a gasp. Jake, look! She pointed to a towering structure at the heart of the city, its walls covered in intricate carvings and glyphs. That looks like some kind of laboratory complex. Maybe we can find answers there. Jake nodded a flicker of hope igniting in his chest. If this ancient civilization had been technologically advanced, perhaps they had discovered something that could help them in their fight against the Crimson Scourge. They made their way inside the laboratory complex, the air growing colder and more stale as they descended into its depths. The walls were lined with banks of ancient computer terminals and strange, twisted apparatuses that Jake could only guess at the function of. Zara rushed over to one of the terminals, her eyes widening as she scanned the glyphs flickering across its screen. Jake, I think this species was researching a virus similar to the Crimson Scourge. Look at these genetic sequences, these protein structures. It's almost identical. Jake felt a chill run down his spine. You think they were trying to find a cure? Zara nodded, her fingers flying over the terminal's interface. It looks like they were close, but then something happened. The records just... stop. Jake looked around at the abandoned laboratory, a sense of dread settling in his gut. What could have wiped out an entire civilization so completely? As they delved deeper into the laboratory's secrets, Jake felt a growing sense of connection to Zara. They were both outsiders in their own way, both driven by a desperate need to find answers and save lives. In the long hours spent poring over ancient data and running simulations, they found themselves opening up to each other, sharing stories of their pasts and their hopes for the future. But their brief moment of peace was shattered by the sound of explosions and blaster fire from above. Vortis had found them. Jake and Zara raced through the twisting corridors of the laboratory, the sounds of battle growing louder with each passing second. They burst into the central chamber to find Vortis and his soldiers locked in combat with the Vorkarian civilians, who had armed themselves with ancient weapons scavenged from the laboratory. Jake locked eyes with Vortis across the chamber, and the two charged at each other. Their faces twisted with rage. They met in a clash of fists and claws, rolling across the floor in a brutal, animalistic struggle. Out of the corner of his eye, Jake saw Zara and the Vorkarian civilians huddled around one of the laboratory's machines, desperately trying to bring it online. He realized with a start that they were trying to synthesize the cure using the ancient technology and his own genetic material. With a roar of fury, Jake managed to pin Vortis to the ground, his hands wrapped around the Vorkarian's throat, but Vortis lashed out with a hidden blade, the razor-sharp edge slicing deep into Jake's side. Jake stumbled back, clutching at the wound as blood poured between his fingers. Through a haze of pain, he saw Zara stagger towards him, 
a vial of glowing blue liquid clutched in her hand. The cure, she gasped, her voice weak. I did it, Jake. I synthesized the cure. But before she could reach him, Vortis surged to his feet, his blade flashing. Zara cried out in pain as the blade plunged into her chest, and she collapsed to the floor, the vial slipping from her grasp. Jake let out a howl of anguish and lunged at Vortis, tackling him to the ground. They grappled for the blade, rolling across the floor in a tangle of limbs and blood. In a final, desperate act, Jake managed to wrench the blade from Vortis's grasp and plunge it into the Vorkarian's chest. Vortis let out a gurgling cry, his eyes wide with shock and pain. Jake staggered to his feet, the cure clutched in his hand. He looked down at Vortis, who lay gasping on the floor, his life bleeding out onto the ancient stone. Claire, it didn't have to be this way, Jake said softly. The cure, it could have saved us all. With a trembling hand, he injected Vortis with the cure, watching as the Vorkarian's body convulsed and then went still. Around him, the Vorkarian soldiers lowered their weapons, their faces etched with confusion and fear. Jake stumbled over to where Zara lay, cradling her in his arms as the last of her life slipped away. I'm sorry, he whispered, tears streaming down his face. I'm so sorry. The human task force arrived too late to save her. They secured the cure and negotiated a truce with the Vorkarian government, but for Jake, the victory felt hollow. He had lost the one person who truly understood him, the one person who had been willing to sacrifice everything for the greater good. In the weeks and months that followed, Jake was hailed as a hero by both humans and Vorkarians alike, but he couldn't shake the feeling that he had failed, that he should have been able to save Zara. He threw himself into his work, dedicating himself to promoting peace and scientific cooperation between species. He knew that it was what Zara would have wanted, and he was determined to honor her legacy. But even as he stood before cheering crowds and accepted medals and accolades, Jake couldn't escape the knowledge that his immunity had come at a terrible cost. He had lost the one person who mattered most to him, and he knew that he would carry that loss with him for the rest of his days. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.